Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship coverage of the O'Reilly Strata Conference. We're here in Santa Clara. This is our third year doing the Santa Clara Strata Conference. Uh, O'Reilly Media does a fantastic job. Uh, this is really a show, or big emphasis on data science and, and the actual application of big data. And we're here covering it. This is our third day of coverage. We've been talking a lot this week about security. It's not a topic that when you know, we first started covering big data that a lot of people were paying attention to. They were trying to figure out, all right, what do we do with this, all, all this data? How do we monetize it? How do we get you know, Hadoop and MapReduce working and, and the like? But security has come front and center. Uh, we've heard about this all week. And we have a, a, a segment on security right now. We're going to talk to Eli Khan, who is the Vice President of Business Development and Marketing at Squirrel. Uh, Squirrel's a company that we introduced to you uh, last year, and uh, they are focused on, on security and scalability and performance of uh, NoSQL, uh, really commercializing the Accumulo project. So we're going to talk about that a little bit and uh, get into it with Eli. Welcome, welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks, David. Yeah, good to see you again. And uh, we're also joined by uh, David Floyer, who's the Chief Technology Officer of Wikibon, somebody who's dabbled over the years, David, in security, go, going back to the RACF days. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the few here who knows what RACF stands for. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, Eli, uh, let's get into it. We've, we've, as I said, we talked to you last uh, Strata. We talked to you at the, the Tug event. You guys seem to be making progress. You're rounding out the team. Uh, give us an update on what's going on with, uh, with Squirrel and the Accumulo project. Yeah, so it's been a really exciting time for Squirrel over the last few months. Uh, the, probably the biggest achievement is that we locked down the first version of our product and we've started installing that in a number of uh, client companies. So we're starting getting great feedback. Uh, we're installing it both in government clients and also big commercial clients. And uh, you know, our goal is to get a, a handful of these under our belt over the next uh, several months and uh, then move into production, so. Yeah, okay, so, this, so it's not just the three letter government agencies that are, that are adopting this, uh, it's, it's more commercial, what kind of industries? You know, it's after, I'm getting new, new, new information uh, every week about commercial adopters of Accumulo. Uh, so as most folks might know, Accumulo was developed originally by the NSA beginning in 2008 and then was open source at the end of 2011. So it was a classified project for the first three years of its life. It's now been an open source project for the last year or so. So not too many people knew about Accumulo outside of the defense and intelligence communities uh, up until about a year ago. I was talking to a defense contractor uh, just this past week and he was telling, uh, telling us that they support uh, 14 different Accumulo deployments within the defense community. He then went on to say that he's supporting twice that many outside the defense community in the commercial sector. So there are now dozens of Accumulo deployments being used across industries such as healthcare, finance, energy, and life sciences. And you know, the key here is that uh, Accumulo is really the only NoSQL database option where security was built in from the ground up. So if you want to run real-time big data analytics on top of mission-critical data uh, in production and your sense about security, Accumulo is really one of your only choices. Yeah, so as you say, it's designed in. It's the funny thing about open source projects, right? You don't really know who's using it and you go out there and oftentimes you're surprised by what's going on there. So we heard Intel this week talk about, it sort of intimate that they might you know, add or try to help add cell level security to, to HBase. Now David, you've made some comments about that in the past. I wonder if you could sort of weigh in on your thoughts of trying to, what I'll say, bolt on security to an existing database environment. What, what's your take there? Well, uh, the first thing I would say is that uh, Intel being serious about security and putting it inside the chip is, is very good That's a good, good thing, news. right. We're, we're Extremely happy about good that. news, yeah. and I hope the chips continue to be uh, fabricated in the US, <laughs> because otherwise if they're fabricated in China, we could have some interesting uh, exposures to uh, security. So I think it's a very good thing. I think it's, uh, they've got a long way to go to even put in the first levels of security. Um, putting in cell, cell level security, that's a great long term objective, but I, I think it's going to take them quite some time and uh, quite some time to get the performance of it and get, get really understand what's required at the chip level and how they interface that. 
uh, to the actual application level, the, the operating systems and the uh, subsystems. There's a long way to go before they get to the stage, as you say, that IBM had in the mainframe. There's still a long way to go. So Eli, you're, um, thank you David, so you're shipping um, your new product, uh, Squirrel Analytics, mm -hmm. right? Um, but, but you haven't made a big splash yet, so you're, you're taking your time, doing, doing the right thing, I think, smart move as a, as a young startup. Talk about, so Squirrel Analytics essentially is designed to, to simplify the development environment for uh, uh, Cumulo. Talk about what your customers are doing, planning to do with uh, the product. Mm -hmm. So uh, Squirrel, Squirrel Analytics, it's a software platform that enables folks to develop real-time big data applications with much greater ease. So using our platform, no longer do you need to be a PhD level or very sophisticated data scientist to build real-time apps on top of big data. Uh, we simplify app development in a few different ways. One, we push down security to the data level. So you don't need to worry about developing complex security requirements or, or rule sets at the application layer. Security is all taken care of at the data layer uh, and we do that by tagging individual key value pairs within the database with security labels. We're also, within Squirrel, we're building a number of integrations to enterprise identity and access management systems, such as Active Directory, so that you can connect those security labels to the organizational roles defined in those systems. We're also building a number of APIs that sit on top of Hadoop and Accumulo uh, within our technology stack that expose a wide variety of different analytical capabilities. So we have APIs developed for real-time statistics, for real-time full text search via Apache Lucene, and real-time graph search. Uh, and we've built these, uh, these APIs on top of Apache Thrift so that they are polyglot. You can utilize them with any popular web programming language. So the demos that we've built uh, for our product, for our Squirrel product, uh, you know, these consist of a couple hundred lines of code in Ruby or Python, and uh, you know, with with those simple web programming languages, you can start building uh, real-time apps that sit on top of mission-critical or sensitive security data. So, talk about some of the the uses that you you see your customers applying that they couldn't uh, achieve mm -hmm. with, say, a, you know, some other NoSQL database. Yeah. So, uh, some of the use cases uh, involve things like cybersecurity. Uh, so some of uh, the, the investment bank that we're working with and the telecommunications company that we're working with are really interested in figuring out how to make their security incident event management tools much more scalable. Uh, so these are large multinational organizations that have petabytes of log information. And they want to start combining that lo those log information which are coming from endpoints, could be coming from security uh, network devices, could be coming from web proxy servers. They want to start combining these log uh, file data sets with other sensitive security data sets such as uh, email emails that might contain proprietary information or personally identifiable, identifiable information. Uh, might be combining it with things like employee access logs into the building. And by bringing all these data sets together in a single platform, and by tagging the sensitive data, data with security labels, you're able to expose the larger data sets to a much wider population of people. So no longer you have to lock down uh, certain data sets very closely because they contain some sensitive information. Instead, you can just tag the data that, isn't sense, that is sensitive and expose the larger data set to all your analysts. So uh, I have a question about the uh, the ingest rate. What sort of ingest rates are you able to uh, to to achieve, and, and and how are you achieving that? I, is it actually moving towards a, a near real time type solutions for in this area? Yes. So we can uh, so we can ingest streaming data feeds. Uh, so our ingest rates can be in the tens of thousands of writes per second. Uh, you know, there's actually a, a benchmarking study that the federal government publi is publishing in the next few weeks. It's going through final pre-pub review at the NSA. And uh, in this benchmarking study, they compared uh, a number of the NoSQL databases in terms of their scalability and their ingest rates. And uh, what I've been told by the authors of that report 
is that Accumulo blows all their NoSQL options out of the water, especially when it comes to uh, ingest and scalability. I'm, ver so I'm very really excited. excited I'm excited that, to see too. the support because you know most benchmarks are benchmarking, and uh, so this is an independent <laughs> source. So very interested to see that. We've got just got a little bit of time, Eli. I wanted to ask your opinion, your thoughts on this story that Silicon Angle broke this morning on the Iranian hacker group, the threats they made to to the vice president, and just in general, the threat that is really coming from from the world and, and state terrorism these days. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, a really interesting story. It's something that uh, I looked long and hard at while I was at the White House as a director of cybersecurity there. And uh, while I was at the White House, we were working on legislation that was really going aimed at trying to close up some of these holes in critical infra infrastructure sectors that uh, these hackers are targeting. So, uh, you know, right now, it's still pretty much the wild, wild west when it comes to uh, cybersecurity protection across a number of key critical infrastructure sectors, such as dams, nuclear power plants, uh, the energy sector, and uh, what the White House is now trying to do is put out uh, a minimum baseline of cybersecurity standards that can take a lot of the easy attacks off the table. You know, when we talk about cybersecurity, oftentimes it's not the most sophisticated attack that gets people into the system. It is uh, you know, lower level, less sophisticated things that should be easily defensible. So yeah, it's scary because there are a lot of holes out there right now and uh, you know, hopefully with some of the uh, White House leadership, uh, we can close a lot of those basic holes. Okay, uh, we're out of time, uh, but uh, thanks for the update, uh, Eli. We'll be watching. Uh, I understand if you got some new, you're, you're expanding your team as well. You got some new management coming on, right? Yeah, we have uh, some great new leaders coming on board. Uh, new CEO, new VP of Services, a new Director of Sales. So we have some uh, some really great talent coming to lead us to our next stage of the company. Awesome, uh, Cambridge Mass based. We love the East Coast angle here in the heart of Silicon Valley. Eli, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Congratulations. Thanks for, yeah. uh, for participating. Keep it right there folks, we'll be right back with our next guest.